we have lift off. <laughs> Welcome Science Castle Explorers, I'm Damon Musselman and I am my Science Castle's resident rocket scientist and today we're going to be talking about space exploration. It was a maybe not so quiet morning at Science Castle. Mike and his friend Lab Mouse Maxi were playing tag in the long haul of Science Castle giggling and screaming at each other. But the fun seemed a bit one-sided. This is not fair, screamed, exclaimed Maxie a bit grumpily. I'm always it because your legs are so much longer than mine. Okay, then the password is Mercury, suggested Mike. Error, error, blared the speaker. Mike was confused, but I, I learned at school that Mercury was the smallest. I've hidden a treasure somewhere on Earth, but to find it, you have to look for the location on the moon during a lunar eclipse. The writing will only show up in total darkness. I've installed a rocket in the dungeons of Science Castle that will take you to my space station in Earth orbit. What an exciting way to get to the basement of Science Castle. The curvy ride ended for Mike and Maxie sliding right into seats of the rocket's cockpit. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Enjoy your stay at the space station, said the onboard computer. Bienvenue and welcome on board the space station. My name is Bruno, explained the funny sounding creature. Do you see these huge solar panels? asked Bruno and pointed outside. They collect the sun's energy to produce electricity for the space station. On one bin it said baking powder, push button to load to rocket. On the other it said water, push button to load to rocket. Warning, once both fuels are loaded, rocket will launch in five minutes. I don't know what this is for, said Bruno, shaking his three eye antennas. Brigitte uses baking powder only for her most delicious pastries. What the heck does that mean? asked Mike. But before Maxie could answer, a familiar voice came over the radio. A voice that only meant trouble. Dr. D. Ha 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 ha! I'm going to beat you to your great 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 grandfather's treasure, silly Mike and Maxie. Oh no, not another surprise, said Mike, and Maxie cried, This is a bad one, we're in huge trouble. The media's gonna smash us, what now? And that is a great question, Maxie. What now? How are Mike and Maxie gonna get out of this situation and back to Earth safe and sound? Maybe our experiments will give them a clue. Our first experiment is going to be something called, something called the recoil principle. Now that is also known to scientists as Isaac Newton's third law of motion. And it says whenever an action takes place, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's find out. Three, two, one, zero. What, uh, what that's called is a projectile. You get that also by shooting a cannonball out of a cannon. It's the same, kind of the same effect. This is called the ocular lens, and it goes in the part of the telescope that's next to your eye. But between these two, even that won't quite cut it. So you need, in between, hidden in the tubes here, a thing called a field lens. And you'll see that there are little lines on it. That's so we can fold it on each line. Don't be surprised when you look through this telescope if an object appears upside down. Because that's, that's something that's pretty usual with these telescopes. But when you're looking at something in space, it's not really important because there's no up or down there. See our marker still in daylight. And then when the marker goes into shadow, boom, all of a sudden it's night. What you may not know is that the Earth is tilted a little bit. About 23 degrees, to be correct, to be precise. That's why, if you've ever heard of the midnight sun in Alaska, or if you happen to live there and you've seen it that way, then uh, now you know why that happens. And that's why we have the seasons. And again, if you've got any questions on this, feel free to type them in. So, how in the heck does something stay up in space and not come falling back to Earth? but in reality, they're moving very, very quickly. In fact, the Space Shuttle and the International Space Station, when they're orbiting the Earth, they move at speeds of over 17,000 miles an hour. They used to think, what the heck happened to the moon that causes this? Well, these are called impact craters. Could come in slow. 
from, or from a low altitude like this. Where the moon was completely in the Earth's shadow, that's when Mike and Maxie could see the, could see the letters. And soon enough, you'll start to feel your finger warming up. In fact, even with, even with just this light bulb right here, I'm already starting to feel it. And you have a great time with your experiments and exploring space. <laughs>